Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. So it is a really cold day. So I am filming inside with my little bantam rooster that I've been raising because it is way too cold out there and I am not going outside any more than I have to today. <laughs> uh, so this is a little rooster that I've been raising. Uh, I posted a photo of him on Instagram when I first got him. There was another little chickie with him. So what happened was is that one of my bantam hens hatched these out um, a few weeks ago and then had no interest in being a mother. She was a really, really bad mom. And so I put her in a small cage with them because I was like, okay, she can take care of them here. She can't do much, but she would completely ignore them and then just like scratch at the food and scratch them and just send them tumbling. So I was like, oh my God. I had to completely remove her from them. So I just put her back out there free range. So I put her back out and I took both of them inside, but his little friend was not doing well. And he actually died, I think within like 48 hours around there. And this one, he's very healthy, very active, wild little animal. And I felt really bad because I don't like keeping them by themselves. But at this time of year, there was nowhere I was going to be able to get another chick. There was, um, just really nothing to do other than just raise him by himself. Um, so he thinks he's a dog now. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting because he's not socialized with chickens at all. And I, I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm glad he made it. He's very, very cool. Super friendly little chick. Um, basically just runs around her house. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be in here with him today because it is cold out there, huh? It's even a little cold in here. We're going to have to turn the heater up. It's, it's just, it's been a crazy, crazy week. Um, a few days ago, it was like 93 degrees, really hot. It's, it was already October and it was like, oh, come on. Like, let's have some nice weather, like low 80s, like just not where it's just super hot. But no, no, Texas was like, no, no, winter. It is winter now. <laughs> so it went from 93 degrees to like 48 degrees, which is probably not that cold for some people, but when you're in like 100 degree weather for months and you're used to the heat and then all of a sudden like it's freezing, that was, that was a dramatic temperature change for us Texans. So we're in winter this week. We went from summer to winter, all, all in like one day. But uh, this cold weather, um, kind of, you know, I've been thinking about how we needed to talk about winter with chickens. And so a lot of other places are already getting really cold. And I want to talk about um, keeping chickens during the winter. And so I hope that by now you guys are signed up to Bird Talk magazine and you have the subscription. So this is Bird Talk. I write in this magazine. I write chicken articles. It's called Yard Bird. Really cool. And uh, this is all about different types of birds. A lot of parrot stuff and all of that. But you need to subscribe to this to read my uh, articles about chickens. And so in this uh, current issue, this is actually the August, September issue. I'm just getting my October one, October, November issue in the mail. But in that issue, I talk a lot about keeping chickens during winter. And so it's all about um, how to keep them warm, what food to feed them, what you need to think about when you know you're keeping your chickens during winter and all of that. So I'm not really going to cover a lot of that because I'd really like for you guys to go over and subscribe to the magazine. It's very, very affordable. And if you use my link and coupon code down below in the description, you're going to be able to get 20% off and it's already very affordable. So there's just really no excuse. I know a lot of people say that they're kids and they can't subscribe to magazines. When I was a kid, I was subscribed to a lot of magazines. So I'm not really sure why a lot of people have been saying that. Um, ask your parents. It's a family friendly magazine. It's about animals. So there's no reason that it's like, oh, I'm too young for it. Um, and it's also, it's easy to read and it's a great thing to read. Uh, I guess maybe kids just aren't reading that much anymore, but you should totally subscribe to this. Even if you don't have birds and you're a kid, you can learn a lot about them here and maybe it can help you figure out um, what bird would be right for you or uh, if you do want to pair it later in life. So uh, just ask your parents, you know, to help you subscribe. Um, it's very affordable, very easy to do. You can get an online subscription or you can get the magazines mailed to you. Um, I like to get print, so I have this. So go over, you still have time to get that issue if you um, go and subscribe soon. But I did want to talk about one thing that I do address in that article, and that is heating your chicken coop. Don't do it. 
So I see so many people in the chicken groups and everything talking about like uh, winter's coming. I want my chickens to be nice and warm. How do I heat my coop? And I think it's great. Like to me, that's seeing somebody that really cares about their birds. They care about those animals. So they want to keep them comfortable. And we've gotten so used to conveniences of you know, having a really warm and toasty house during the winter and all of that. But you have to consider your animals and understand what's best for them and not what you think is comfortable. So that's something really, really important when caring for animals is learning to understand the difference. So learning to understand like, okay, this is what I find comfortable, but this animal might not have the same needs. It might not have the same desires that I do. And so with the chickens, you do not want to heat the coop. So first reason, that's a huge fire hazard. Um, that's, you, you don't want to have heat lamps or a heater or something like that in a small area where you're not being able to observe it. And you have stuff like wood shavings and feathers and hay and all of that. That's just a recipe for disaster. So that's already a really good reason that um, that could be that could go really bad. So you don't want to do that. That's already a good reason to not heat your coop. But on top of that, consider your birds. Um, birds are really, really good about tolerating climates. And so as long as you have birds that are going to be able to get out of the weather, so get out of rain, snow, and wind, they're perfectly fine. That's, that's more than enough for them. And two, like think about what type of birds you do have. So there's chickens that are better for cold climates. There's chickens that have been bred for that. Because trust me, a hundred years ago when people were creating these breeds, some of them are a lot older than a hundred years. When people were creating these breeds, they did not think, oh, okay, well, let me, you know, heat up this chicken coop. No, they weren't doing that. They were, you know, putting a shelter for them, but they were letting those animals live out there without anything, without any heating or anything like that or air conditioning during summer. So just consider that. Make sure that you have uh, chickens that are appropriate for where you live and then just take certain precautions like make the coop nice and insulated. Uh, make sure it doesn't have drafts, uh, things like that, but don't heat it. They don't need that. And also chickens produce a lot of body heat. So once you close them in for the night, those chickens are going to heat up that chicken coop. So your hen house, you close it up, you know, there's not that much space, you know, enough space for each bird, but it's a small area with a lot of birds. They're going to heat that up with their body heat and it's going to be comfortable for them. And you also want to think about too, like, um, it's, I've noticed that in the chicken world, people don't record the temperatures the way that people in the reptile world do and so they just put these like extreme heat bulbs in there like uh, 200 watts and you can make your coop over 100 degrees very easily that's not comfortable for these birds and then on top of that they're adjusting to cold weather they need to do this naturally they need to get ready for seasonal changes but they go from you know whatever it is like in the 30s outside and then into a coop that's over 100 degrees that's what's going to make them sick like that's going to be really hard for them to tolerate these huge temperature differences when they're going in and out of the coop so don't heat your coop your chickens are going to be just fine if you have a, a nice insulated coop for them that's all they need that way you avoid fire risks you um you know have a comfortable place for your chickens something that's going to be super hot is not going to be comfortable for them. Now there's a lot more that you can find out about keeping your chickens comfortable throughout the winter and making sure that they are kept warm enough and that they're able to make it through to spring. A lot of them will even keep laying eggs if you just take care of them the right way. But um, for that, you're going to have to um, read my article in Bird Talk Magazine. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this short vlog about heating the coop. Let me know what topics you want me to cover in future vlogs. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!